Hey guys, welcome to a new tutorial with PST Box. I'm Andre, and today I'm going to talk about luminosity masks. I got a question from uh, Tara. I'm going to go to YouTube. She was asking uh, if there's a quick way to uh, select highlights in Photoshop. And she was asking, um, I'm retouching an interior architecture shot and I have uh, bracketed exposures. I want to select the overexposed window and other highlights so that I can make a mask uh, to paint in these parts with the lower exposure to reveal the trees out, windows, etc. So, and she was asking if there's a um, quick way of doing this in Photoshop. And actually, there is a quick way. You still have to use um, channels, but uh, you can automate that using an action if you want to. And actually, I have an action that uh, selects highlights for you in Photoshop. Let's go to Photoshop here, and I have this uh, example here. And as you can see, I have two shots, uh, two bracketed exposures. This is an overexposed image, so I can see all the details here on the bridge and on the grass here in the foreground. And this one is too exposed, well, it's exposed for the sky. So, um, there's a quick way of uh, doing this uh, in Photoshop. There's a quick way of masking this uh, without having to do it manually, let's say. So, what you do is go into Channels and work with the mouse better. So, what you do here is select the RGB channel, and what you do is press Ctrl or Command T, and you can see a small icon appears under the hand icon. If you click it, you will see um, the selection uh, has been created. What you select here is uh, light and dark information. If you, uh, if you click here on the um, layer mask icon, when on the alpha mask actually, you will create an alpha 1 channel that is basically the back black and white version of your RGB channel. And from here we start to mask the highlights. So what you do is control click the alpha one mm, thumbnail again and then you have to multiply the selection by itself so the way you do that is pressing shift uh, actually if you press control or command you can see that square appears if you also press the alt you can see the minus that means you subtract information and if you also press the shift key you will see an x inside that and that means you're multiplying the selection if you click that you will see that the selection shrinks and those marching ends now are smaller. And now I'm going to create a new alpha channel that's named alpha 2. Let's rename this alpha layers and let's name this light 1, actually light 2, and this one light 1. And all you need to do here, all you need to do here is just multiply the selection as many times as you want until you isolate the highlights that you want. So I'm going to continue with light 2. I'm going to press Alt, con uh, Control, Alt, and Shift. Uh, well, first Control, Click, and then Control, Alt, Shift, and Click to multiply the selection. Create a new alpha layer, and you can see now it's darker and darker. And I start to isolate the brightest highlights. Let's name this light. Control click and now control alt shift click and I think it's enough for this particular image and I'm gonna create this light four. Now if you have really bright highlights you want to continue uh, multiplying this selection by itself a few times especially if you want to create an action because um, this action uh, might uh, be good for different um, kind of situation where you have more highlights or less highlights so it's better to have more uh, layer masks than you actually need. Uh, that way you um, you can use them for different kind of situations. Now, in order to isolate the shadows, the, you have to do the inverse process. So you go back to the RGB, control click it, and now you have to invert the selection. So you can go to select, inverse, or use the keyboard shortcuts, control, shift, and I. And now you can see the selection is inverted. And we're gonna, we're gonna click, uh, alpha layer again, but this time you can see because the selection is inverted, I isolate, I'm starting to isolate the shadow. So I'm going to name this dark one and I'm going to control click and the process is the same. Control click and then control alt shift click. This will expand my selection. I'm going to click again the alpha layer. You can see darker became uh, darker and the white uh, areas became brighter. I'm going to name this dark and I'm gonna do it again 
I'm just going to delete really quick. And, yeah. and let's do another one, the last one. Okay, now, nah. oops. Made a mistake, control click. Great, now. Oh. Um, what you need to do now is once you have all your images, I'm not going to do this for the midtones, but you can do that. Uh, the process is uh, you go to light one, control click it, this will load the selection, and you go to dark one, and now you have to press control alt, and you will see that minus, and click on dark one, and this will um, subtract the light information from the dark one and create. Uh, create the layer mask and so on, but in this case it's not necessary and usually it's not necessary to isolate the midtones, but um, anyways. Uh, now, once I have all my um, masks here, I go back to RGB, go to my image, uh, to my layers palette, and now you can see I have these two images here. So what I want to do is make um, this uh, bright layer on top, Put it here on top and reveal the sky underneath and also some of the reflections here on the water so what i can do is use one of the selections that i have here see so the only thing i want to do i need to do sorry is to locate uh, one of the layer masks that isolates the bridge entirely and only reveals the sky remember this is works the opposite way um, I want everything that is black will hide the effect. So I want uh, to find a layer mask where the sky is black and the bridge is white. So in this case, this one of these two will work uh, for me uh, because I only keep this the bridge and the grass here and the water and the sky are um, are not visible. So I'm gonna control click, go here, and create the layer mask. And you can see it's not perfect, but it's really uh, close to what I'm looking for. Because as you can see uh, here, I'm keeping the bridge and I'm hiding uh, the sky and pretty much uh, everything else. Uh, we still have to do some manual work, so I'm going to get the brush tool. I'm going to work with low opacities, 50 and 50. And I'm going to keep brushing on the bridge because I want to remove the... Uh, I want to keep the original bridge entirely, not reveal the one on the bottom because it's, it's too dark. Like that. And also on the water, um, I want to... Well, actually, let's work on the sky and let's um, darken the, the sky completely because you can still see some of the uh, remaining, remaining of the, uh, remainings of the mask there. So I'm gonna make sure I hide that. And here on the grass, Let's. Um, I'm not gonna paint over this area yet. Um, in this case, we, ha we have some problems here. This white area is because uh, it was windy outside, and there's a ghost uh, there. Actually, I'm gonna leave it there for now. And also here on the waves, you can still see that. So you could probably hide that with a brush, and you can do the same here. On the edge. Now I could go into camera raw uh, here on the bright layer, double clicking on it, um, and I could um, increase the uh, saturation on the grass, well, on the whole image. Probably um, let's add some shadows there, some light there on the bridge. Remember that the only thing that is visible is the bridge and the grass, so don't worry about uh, the sky. And I'm going to leave it like that and click OK. And the same thing we could do with the under, underexposed one. I could double click on it. And I could make the water stand out a little more so I could add some shadows maybe. This will help blend both images. I could even incre increase, uh, increase the exposure a bit, not too much, because I don't want to blow the sky. And what else? Contrast. No contrast. Let's leave it like that. 
more saturation. I could probably work with the curves a bit. And click OK. Now let's see if now both images blend a bit better. There we go. Now the image looks a lot, a lot better now. Uh, probably uh, the sky is too bright, so I could um, use a gradient here actually. Um, like that. Just to darken the sky. Maybe with a lower exposure and more clarity. And let's click OK and wait for the filter to apply. And there we go. Uh, this is sort of an HDR, a man manual HDR if you want. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, let me show the mask. This is how it looks like. And this mask, even though um, I had to do some manual work here on the sky and um, some parts here, I think it's a lot quicker and a lot more precise than doing it manually with any other tool that you have. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, as I said, it works really well for architecture and indoor photogra uh, photography. I'm going to create an action for this and you'll have it on the website. So uh, if you're watching this from YouTube, you can go to my website and download it from there. So I hope you liked this tutorial and we'll see you next time.